In this course in general, and in this video in particular, I wanna show you how your faith, how trust in God can be a muscle that you can exercise and therefore grow. And that it's also a muscle that shrinks when you don't use it. We grow our faith by putting knowledge about God into action. It's what we mean when we say we exercise our faith. It's what St. Peter means when he says to work out your salvation. Faith is simply that. It's knowledge in action. It's taking a step forward because you know that there's a safety net beneath you. Faith is overcoming your fears and taking a step into the unknown because you believe that God will catch you when you fall. And you believe that because he always has. Jesus says in John 17 that salvation or eternal life is experiential knowledge of God. It's tasting God and knowing that he's good, that we acted in faith and God came through. Many people today think that the Christian faith is believing that Jesus lived and died and rose again despite being unable to prove it. But that's not faith, that's historical knowledge. Everything that we know or think we know about the past is simply historical knowledge. Faith relates to the future, not to the past. Faith is taking different knowledge from the past and applying it to how you're gonna live in the future. So for instance, if I'm scared of flying and you show me all the historical data about how flying is safer than driving in a car and you take me to an airport and you show me people getting on and off planes safe and sound, faith is then me getting on the plane despite my fear without knowing with full certainty what's gonna happen because you never know, the maintenance crew could have had a bad day. If I don't get on the plane, then I don't trust you. Even if I say that I believe you that planes are safe, I think one of our favorite verses in the West is maybe Genesis 15, six, which says, by faith, Abraham believed the Lord and it was credited to him as righteousness. By which we mean Abraham made up his mind when God told him something. And in that moment he was saved so that when he died, he would go to heaven. For us Gnostics, truth is a theoretical concept and faith is having the right answers to the test. It's knowing that two plus two equals four and Jesus died for our sins. Faith for us has become more about mental ascent than actually facing our fears and stepping into God's provision. Let me say this, having the right answers to the test is not Christianity. Jesus said that only those who do the will of the Father will enter into heaven. St. Maximus says that spiritual knowledge without life application is the theology of demons. That's a scary quote. The writer of Hebrews gives us a better interpretation of why God approved of Abraham. He says that by faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he went, not knowing where he was going. Read all of Hebrews 11. You'll learn what faith does and how faithful action brings salvation. Again, Christianity is not about knowing the right answers. Deliverance or salvation always requires walking out of Egypt into the promised land. When we trust and obey God, we taste his goodness through the peace and the joy that we feel. Emotions are simply the aftertaste of certain actions. Here's practically what I mean. If we say that we believe God is good and that he'll provide for us in the future, and we can't make it home in time for dinner with our family, or we can't break away from work for lunch, then we don't trust God. If we don't have enough time to exercise and we're not getting enough sleep because the market is good right now and we need to strike while the iron's hot, then we don't trust that God will continue to provide in the future. So in this sense, getting enough sleep and taking time for exercise and time to eat with other people are all acts of faith in God. When you take time to work out, when you don't think you have time for it, and your project gets done and done well, then your faith in God grows. Or here's the alternate scenario. Let's say that because you decide to put boundaries on your work in an effort to trust God more, you get fired because you're not working 10 to 12 hours a day. And you therefore have to downsize your home and your, and your lifestyle. And you don't find a job that pays as well and you have to take a job that pays less. But in this new job, you have more time. 
you get, you're able to go home earlier and you spend more time with your family. Oh, and you have time for exercise and maybe even a hobby. Well, in this scenario, your faith in God also grows because guess what? You're happier than you used to be. In this scenario, you really taste of God's goodness and your faith in Him really grows because what you thought was the worst thing in the world, losing your job, was actually the best thing for you. That you didn't know what you really wanted, but God did, and He acted in your best interest. There's a myriad of ways that you can test yourself and see whether you're in the faith, as St. Paul says, by which I think he means test yourself to see if you trust God. For example, if you have a work call early in the morning, try asking God to wake you up instead of your iPhone. I've done this many times, and I've woken up at the, at the minute that I ask God to wake me up. It's wild. But there's also a lot of times in my life where I don't have enough faith in God to rely solely on Him to wake me up for a certain meeting, and so I set an alarm. In this way, I can gauge where I'm at with my trust in God. Faith is very practical, and we used to have a lot more opportunities in our day-to-day -day lives to experientially know God better to grow our faith in Him, but our technology is stealing these opportunities from us. What did we used to do when we couldn't remember where we parked our car, for instance? We would pray, God, where did I park? Please help me find my car. And when you found your car, you would think, man, if God cares about something as small as helping me find my car, maybe I'll ask Him to help me find a spouse. Today, it's, Siri, where did I park? And when Siri shows you where you parked your car, your faith in Siri grows. And then you think, maybe I'll ask my phone to help me find a spouse.